guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today I'm going to be working on a new custom wyvern piece. My idea for this piece was to have something that would look like it could go completely invisible and something that would be really shimmery and pretty. I figured pearlescence would be a good example of this because they almost look like they could go invisible. Also the closest living creature to something that can actually go invisible is a chameleon so I figured something like that would be cool to base this wyvern off of. Anyways, let's get started. So lately, a lot of my art dolls have not had a ton of clay work involved. Lately, I've been using a lot of my resin claws to make poseable feet, and this is going to be another one. So to start on our clay head, I've got a lump of tin foil, and I've got it glued to a glass container to hold on to, but I also have some resin pieces glued onto the side for our eyes. So I'm going to be building up some clay around this, and the reason for this is because I'm going to be basing a lot of the creature's design off of a chameleon, and I figured using the large discs would help a lot with the shape of the eyes. Now normally I would be covering up the entire thing with clay right now, but for this piece I'm going to be just covering up our resin discs and focusing on making the eyes. So I'm just going to do that. I'm also going to add a little bit of clay around the base of our thing, that way I can make sure everything kind of stays in place because we are going to be doing a pre-bake after I get the eyes sculpted. So for making the eyes, I rolled out a really thin sheet of clay, I cut some circles out of it, and I laid them over our little resin discs. Then I took a plastic straw, because this was just the thing that was big enough to make a hole, and I poked it right into the very center of the eye, removing that chunk of clay. And then once I have the opening of the eye made, I can then take my tools and start sculpting around it, making some scaly eyelids and just adding some wrinkles around the skin of the eye. Once I'm happy with the look of the eyes, I'm going to do a pre-bake. A pre-bake is just baking the clay a little bit to where it's not completely baked, but it's baked enough where you can't sculpt it anymore. So I'm just going to put it in the oven at our temp, which is 275 Fahrenheit, for about 20, maybe 25 minutes. And then once that's done baking and is cooled, we can start working on the rest of the clay. So I'm going to start covering up the rest of the face in pieces of clay, just kind of laying the shape out and figuring out how I want the head to be shaped. Now for the shape of the head, I wanted to make it pretty unique, so what I ended up doing was I picked two chameleons to base the shape off of. I decided to go with a panther chameleon and a Jackson's chameleon, mainly because I really like the shape of the panther head, but I wanted to throw in some horns, at least one, so I ended up going with a Jackson's chameleon too. For the horn, this is just a resin horn that I made actually quite a while ago. I've been trying to use a lot of my resin pieces that I made and just never used. So I found this and I thought it would work really well. The color isn't going to work for the piece, but I'm going to paint over that so it's not a big deal. So I've got my horn in place and I'm going to start adding a scaling texture over the entire face. I really want to add a lot of detail to this. This is one of those things that takes quite a lot of time sculpting wise because you got to make tiny little balls of clay, add them to the clay face, and then blend them into the face. And I usually do it one at a time, but just kind of mirroring each other. So I'll go back and forth between the two different sides of the face to try and make them as even as possible. And like I said, it takes a while, but it's definitely worth it if you put the extra time into getting those scales really nice and clean.
And then once I have all my scales in place and I'm happy with how the face looks, I'm gonna do one final bake at 275 Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes. Once our clay head is out of the oven and is cooled, we can start on painting it. We're also going to be painting a couple resin claws for the feet. Now, I'm only doing four and you'll see why once we get to the sewing and I'll show you the layout of the design, but I only have four claws that I'm gonna be doing. So we're gonna take our clay pieces and we're gonna primer everything with a very pale pink. I'm gonna go over absolutely everything, make sure it's a solid pink, and then we can start adding our colors. And my colors are going to be a little bit random and we're gonna clean it up here in a bit afterwards, but I'm gonna be adding a lot of yellows, blues, maybe a little bit of purples here and there. I'm just trying to make it look very pearlescent. Um, I have a few paint colors that I'm using that do have a pearlescent sheen, but I wanna give it that like multicolor look. Now, I want to try and make it look natural and just kind of random, but I also still really like symmetry. So I'm going to try and lay out the colors to where they're even on both sides. Nothing's just randomly put there, but I'm going to mix it up to where it kind of looks like I mixed it up and made it random, but it all lays out nice and evenly. <laughs> And then the last little bit of painting that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a gold paint, I'm going to go over that horn that we have on the face, and I'm going to go over the claws that we have. So just leaving it really simple, I thought gold looked really nice against all the other colors that we're using. And then once everything is dried, I'm just going to clean up the extra paint that got on our resin eyes that are poking through the eye holes. I'm just going to clean them up a little bit, and then I'm going to resin over everything with a clear coat to help protect the paint that we did. So those are going to have to cure overnight, but we have a ton of sewing to work on, so let's get started on that. Okay, so here is the pattern that we're going to use to make our fairy wyvern. So I have the main body, the tail, which I'm going to have curling the opposite direction that a chameleon's tail curls because it just kind of laid out better and worked more for the position that I'm going to have it kind of mainly standing in. So I've got that and then I've also got the back legs. You can see that each leg, the feet, only have two toes and that's why we only have four claws. And then we have some really interesting wings that we're going to be making. So I guess I kind of lied, we're not starting on the sewing just yet. I actually need to dye the fabric. So we're gonna be using a combination of plush fabric along with sequins. And the only plush fabric that I have that works is a white, and that's very close to the colors that I want, but I want to throw in those pinks and yellows and blues and stuff like that that we painted on the face. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all my plush fabric that I wanna dye, I'm gonna lay it down on some plastic, and I'm going to get it all nice and damp. Then I'm going to water down some acrylic paint and I'm going to spray it on the fabric where I want the colors. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to randomly spray the colors just here and there. I'm going to start with the yellows and the pinks and slowly add like blues. I might do purple, but I think once I get done with the blue, it'll probably be fine. Now, if you're curious why I actually get my fabric wet before I add the colors, it's actually to help blend everything together. It helps the colors to actually bleed into one another and not leave just sudden stop and start spots where the colors are. So if you want your colors to blend together nicely, get the fabric wet first. If you don't want that, make sure to start off with dry fabric. Now, of course, we need to wait for everything to dry first before we can start on the sewing. So I'm going to try and speed things along with a heat gun and a fan and just try and like, get everything to dry up a lot faster than it would. Otherwise, we'd probably have to wait till the next day. So for the sewing, I'm going to start with the sides of the body, which I have broken up into two different types of fabric. The top portion is going to be our plush fabric that we dyed, and the bottom portion is going to be a sequence that I really like. So I'm going to be sewing these together for each side, and then what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the tail. 
So for the tail, I have a spiral drawn out on one side and I've got two pieces of fabric pinned together. And I'm gonna follow these lines with my sewing machine and go all the way around our spiral. After that, we can cut it free, just separating the spiral and I can flip it right side out and stuff it. Now I also have some decorative frills that I want to go around the neck of our wyvern, so I'm going to sew those real quick. So I got one for each side of the head. Next thing, I'm gonna start sewing the legs. So for the upper portion of the leg, which is more of the thigh area, I want that to be the sequent fabric, and then the rest of the leg I want to be plush. I'm gonna do the same thing to the lower portion of the leg. I have a inside portion and an outside portion, and I'm gonna sew them together going down the front of them. Then we can take the upper and lower portion of the legs and we can sew those together, just right at the knee. For the feet, I'm gonna pin those fabrics together as well. Each one has a top and bottom, and I'm gonna sew around them, but I'm gonna leave openings for where we're gonna add the claws. So I'm gonna stop and start at the very tips of the toes so I have some holes to add our claws. Now for the fabric for the belly. So this is a sequent fabric, and I wanna add a gem to the chest portion of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the gem that I wanna add, I'm gonna trace around it, and I'm going to actually cut away the sequence inside that oval. So I'm gonna cut all that away until I expose the plain fabric that's underneath. You don't wanna cut through the backing of the fabric. And I'm gonna glue the gem down on that backing. And I'm gonna to wanna to let that dry completely before we start using this piece. Luckily, we won't need it for a while. Okay, so now we're gonna start on our wings. So for the webbing of the wings, I have this really pretty shimmery pearlescent fabric. And I originally just bought this because it was pretty. I didn't have it planned for this. It just worked out really well. Um, next time around, I'm gonna pick something that's a lot thinner because this was super thin thick and hard to work with to make wings. It would work for a lot of other things, but making wings, it was just really thick, so it made sewing it really hard. Anyways, I have fabric for both sides of the wings. I'm gonna start with the webbing. I'm gonna pin these together and sew around the bottom section. Then once I have that sewn, I can flip it right side out. Now where I had the trouble was adding our extra layers. So I wanna add a plush fabric to the sides of the wings where the finger portions are gonna go. So for each side of our wing, I laid down my plush fabric and then I have a sheet of tearaway fabric that I'm going to end up laying down and this has the lines that I'm going to follow. So I'm gonna follow all my lines with my sewing machine and I'm gonna go all around everything and then we can tear away this fabric and cut away any excess fabric that we have. And like I said, this took forever because I had to go really slow with my sewing machine because I don't have an industrial sewing machine. I've got a pretty cheap one. And last thing I wanna do is break a needle while I'm sewing super thick fabric. I've had it happen before and it's terrifying. <laughs> so I was going pretty slow with this. After that, I'm gonna add some wires to make the wire frame of the wings, and then I'm gonna add some final decoration. So I want the ends of each finger to be decorated with gold, and I have a gold fake leather, so I'm gonna make some little caps that are gonna go at the end of these, and I'm gonna glue these in place. I'm not gonna sew the fabrics thick enough as it is. And then one final detail that I decided to do was add some texture to our uh, shimmering fabric of the webbing. Um, it just looked too clean and everything, so I decided I wanted it to look a little bit scalier. So I took a dotting tool, just something kind of pokey, and I just kind of 
stabbed the fabric, not enough to break the surface and like, like put a hole in the fabric, but just enough to dent the surface and make a dot. So I just kind of added dots all over the surface of our webbing fabric just to make it look a little bit more scaling and I'm actually really happy with it but it took me hours to do this. <laughs> like I said this fabric wasn't purchased for this project it just looked really nice with the rest of the design so I ended up using it. Next time around going to find something a lot easier to use. Anyways, we have basically everything ready. I've got a wireframe that I pre-made and we're going to start putting our dragon together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add our wings to the wireframe. So I'm going to connect the wires that we have already in the wings and I'm going to wrap them together and add them to our wireframe and make sure they're nice and secure. Next, I'm going to take the sides of our dragon and I'm actually going to sew them together going down the back portion, mainly because I have these little decorative nodules that I have on the back and I want to sew and stuff those. So I'm going to get that done and I'm going to add the tail to this real quick and then we can add this to the wireframe. So I'm going to run the wings through the fabric of the body and then I'm going to run the wire for the tail through our spiral tail, which this was a little bit difficult because of the spiral, but I went slow and it actually worked pretty well. I'm going to sew the wings in place on the sides of the body, just kind of closing everything up. And then we can take our clay head and we can add it to the wire frame. So I'm going to glue that in place at the end of the wire for the neck. And then we can take the fabric for the neck and start gluing it around the base of the head. We're also going to take the belly piece that's finally dry from adding our little gem and we can glue it to the underside of the head. You want to let that dry a little bit and then we can start sewing and stuffing our body. So I'm going to go all the way from the neck all the way down until we get to the tail. After that we can start adding our back legs. So I'm going to take the fabric for the legs, I'm going to figure out how I want to connect them to the body, and I'm going to sew them in place. With these you want to make sure that the wire for the leg is going to be on the inside of that. So just make sure that you're sewing around where the wire is sticking out of the body. I'm then going to adjust the length of the wire for the legs, make sure that they're the correct length that I need, and we can start adding our feet to the ends of these. So with the feet, what I ended up doing is once I ended up sewing them, I have a small wire frame that goes inside of them, and the claws are glued in place at the ends of each wire. I then just add the wire frame to the toes, glue the fabric around the claws, and then stuff them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just take that wire frame in the feet and we're going to add this to the legs. So I'm just going to wrap these together and then we can start sewing these two pieces together as well and then stuffing and closing up the backs of the legs. After that, we just have to decorate our dragon a little bit more, just kind of cleaning everything up, and of course, adding our frills that go around the neck. 
So I'm going to glue those in place and then I want to add a few extra little sequin scales in place. So I have this other fake leather fabric that has scales kind of embossed on it and I'm going to cut these out individually and add them to the body. Okay guys, and here is our shimmering fairy dragon. I had so much fun with this project. I absolutely love how all the colors and stuff came out, or even the lack of colors. And even though I can't make an art doll actually go invisible, I think I got pretty close to making it look like this could go invisible if it wanted to. Anyways, our fairy dragon is going to be looking for a new home, so I'm going to have him up for sale on my website. I have the links down below to that, and then I also have a bunch of different materials linked down below, so if you're curious on just the average thing I tend to use to make my art dolls, you can check those out. And just a reminder, these are affiliated links, so if you buy anything through them, it does help support the channel. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!